Hello, Oscillator Sync here, or maybe that should be Operator Sync, because this is the first video in the series where we'll be building patches from scratch on the Korg Op6. I'm really, really excited to bring this synth to the channel because uh, I've been playing with it for a few weeks and it really is a sound design playground and there's so much to talk about. And, and to that end, uh, alongside the sort of patch from scratch videos, I'll also be putting out a series of sort of in-depth looks at some of the features of the synth and looking at how we can use them uh, creatively and musically. Now, obviously, me being me, I've sat and I've made patches that do sort of like auto-generated melodies and and grooves. Uh, I've been doing uh, stuff like trying to recreate the architecture of a Buckler uh, music easel to create sort of Krell patches. Uh, made weird foreboding drones and, and the like. And we will get to all of this kind of stuff, um, believe me, because there's some really interesting stuff happening uh, beneath the surface on this synth. But this is a new polysynth to the channel, and as has been established, if I don't start by making a nice pad, the synth police will come and arrest me. So that is what we will be doing today. So as to the kind of pad that I want to make today, I'm not going to do anything sort of super, super ambient in this case. We'll We'll definitely do one of those in a later video, uh, obviously. Uh, but instead, I want to go for something that's sort of a bit nostalgic, a little bit uh, retro, warm, fuzzy, um, dare I say, a little bit lo-fi. Uh, I'm thinking the uh, pink and yellow neon lights aesthetic may be going on here in our future a little bit. Uh, and I'll also set um, a couple of ground rules not really rules, but just some guidelines that I'm going to go for with this patch. Uh, so the dirty secret of the Op6 is that it's not really an FM synth, or rather it is an FM synth, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it can do so many other forms of synthesis, uh, which we will get to on the channel. We'll take some deep dives into that. But uh, for this patch, I'm going to concentrate on, on FM for the sake of familiarity. And also uh, in terms of the wave shapes that I'll be using uh, in the operators, I'm going to stick with sine waves um, as well. Uh, but other than that, we'll explore the synth and see what we can create. Right, so let's jump in and start thinking about the patch. So with any um, FM setup, um, often what will dictate the shape of the patch, if you like, is uh, thinking about which algorithm we're going to use, what um, arrangement of operators. Um, or rather, another way to look at it is you think about what you're trying to achieve and then choose an algorithm that is going to work with that. So what I'm going to try and um, emulate here uh, in an FM world is the idea of like a three oscillator polysynth. So what we need is an algorithm which has um, three carriers at the bottom for our output. And I'm going to go with, um, so make sure we're on the algorithm page, I'm going to go with my old standby of algorithm five, which essentially gives us three two op um, FM voices. So three carriers, each with a single modulator feeding into them. At the moment, we're just on uh, listening to the one um, operator there. Um, and each of these separate operators have their own modulator that we can work with. So I think the way that I'm going to work in order to get this patch is I'm going to concentrate to begin with just with operator one and two. So what would be our single oscillator to begin with? We'll get that doing something uh, that works for us. And then I will copy that across um, to operator three and four and maybe just tweak it a bit, detune it a little bit to get a bit of thickness to get that sort of bass sound to what we're working with. And then I'll save operator five and six to do something maybe a little bit more creative on top of that. So let's just bring up our um, output of our first carrier. First thing we probably want to look at is getting a more paddy uh, kind of envelope to it. So what I'll do is I'll uh, make sure that I am on operator one here, which I am, and I'll go into the level uh, envelope generator page here. And uh, first page here we have a, an envelope, so let's give ourselves a longer attack. Do you want it to be like super long? Something like that would be fine. What do we think about the... I think that decay could be a little bit longer though. And maybe go a slightly bit lower. Yep, okay, I like that. And give it a little bit more of a luxurious release. Yeah. 
and there's a certain beauty just to um, sine waves, isn't there, sometimes? Which reminds me, so if we head into our mode page, we're not going to be messing with the um, the different uh, operator modes today, But and I did say I was going to stick with the sine wave, but if we go into our wave shape selector here, we can see that we do actually have three different flavors of sine. We have a high definition sine, which is what we're on at the moment. We then have a 12-bit sine, which is a bit more um, DX7-esque. It's a subtle difference, but there's just a little bit more sort of fluff around it. And if we want to get um, even more fluffy, we have an 8-bit. And hopefully the YouTube um, uh, audio compression won't mess with that, but you can hear that there's a definite um, almost hiss to the sound there, which is probably a bit too much for what we were looking at here, but I'll go with the 12-bit instead. Just a little, little bit more grit. Okay, so now um, let's think about bringing in our first modulator. So we don't want to push it really, really hard with this because we don't want things getting too, too harsh. We'll also need to adjust that uh, envelope. Uh, but let's have a look at our, our ratio here because with um, FM, what defines the uh, timbre of our uh, carrier is the level of modulator that's going into it and then the ratio of the frequencies. So we'll, we'll stick with something that's a fairly simple ratio. Um, so we're one to one at the moment, which has this kind of vibe. What about one to two? kind of hollows things out and gives us like a sort of square wave, reedy kind of vibe. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's try um, halving the ratio. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. I don't like the fact that um, we're dropping down an octave. So what I will do, rather than having this at one and this at a half, I'll set this at two and this one at one, which will achieve the same thing. Okay, that basic tonality is interesting, especially because when we have it lower, we lose what is sort of our new fundamental. And we can push this one quite high without it getting overbearing. So let's think about our um, envelope. So, um, so make sure that we're on operator two now. We'll go into our uh, level EG here. Obviously, we're probably going to want it to fade in. Let's try that. Do you know what? Maybe not. Maybe we want to start it with that lower stuff happening, and then we'll have a longer decay coming down to a sustained level where we're almost... Starting to lose that fundamental and the longer release. Well, that's a case too long, isn't it? Uh, it kind of feels like it's moving a little bit too suddenly uh, towards the end there, and that's probably because the curve currently is nearly exponential. So let's dial that back so that our um, level envelope is linear instead and see how that changes the sound of that sort of last bit of the decay. Yeah, that sounds more natural to me. Cool, that's maybe slightly less at its extremity. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that now. So um, let's think about how we can make this a little bit richer. So the first thing we can do maybe with our modulator is go into our pitch control here and we can either detune or offset our frequency here to get a little bit of wobble to it. Okay, maybe just a 
slightly less. This is the thing with FM, you always end up starting out with too much modulation and then just dialing it back to get it to sit a bit better. Okay, yeah, I like that. That's cool. So um, the next thing I want to address is just making sure that this patch is playable. And what I mean by that is that it responds nicely under the fingers to velocity. So the first thing we want to do is probably come back to uh, operator one and come into our level here and go into the second page. It's on the second page, the third page even. And uh, here we're able to adjust how much the velocity is going to affect the level of uh, the carrier, which is going to be our volume. So um, generally as a rule of thumb, I found that something around sort of 25, 30 works well for this. So now if I play lightly, as opposed to if I play hard. Maybe a little bit more difference there. So if I play lightly, and if I play hard, I think somewhere around there is gonna work. Um, and then if we go into um, operator two, we can do a similar thing so that we get more uh, of the modulator giving our modulation more richness to our sound the harder we play. So again, I'll start around 30. So I play lightly, nice and mellow, play harder, bit more to it, maybe a little bit higher than that, maybe up the maximum, so lightly and hard, maybe a bit more. lightly and hard yeah cool yeah that's that's working okay so i think that's probably uh, a good starting point so what i want to do now is replicate this uh, across to the next two operators now this could be a laborious task where i have to do everything by hand Luckily, Korg have thought about this uh, and made it easy for me to copy these things across. So if I go into my miscellaneous menu here and I come down to the oputil page here, uh, we can copy either the whole of the operator, just the envelope generator, or just the key tracking uh, from one operator to another. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to save first in case I've messed up patches by copying to the wrong place. Uh, so it's maybe paranoid. So we're going to go from one to three, so from our first carrier to our second carrier and we'll say yes and then we want to go from two to four so from our first modulator to our second modulator press yes and then we go and then if I bring these up to similar levels it shouldn't sound very bit different at all because they're both doing exactly the same thing at the moment so let's address that so if I come back to the pitch and we're going to go over to operator one, and I'm just going to detune it a little bit, like maybe four or something. And then we'll come across to operator three, which is our second carrier, and we'll detune it up three. And then we should get a richer sound. Okay. Uh, Okay, that's, um, that's a good start. So let's take a look how we can get some additional sort of differences between these two oscillators, if you like, in our synth voice. So the first thing is that I might take operator three and maybe try a different set of ratios. Perhaps I'll drop this one back down to one and maybe try a one-to-one -one ratio for that voice. Um, so listen. Or maybe even a one-to-two. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I now think that the decay on our modulators is probably a little bit slow. 
so uh, let's go to number two and in here we'll just maybe from five seconds down to three and a half or something and we'll do the same on this one as well Cool. Now I think I also want to get a little bit more attitude out of these um, these two voices. So there's a number of ways we can we can think about that. So um, the first and easiest way, and this is one of the great things about the Op Six over, say, a traditional DX7 setup, is that uh, in the Op Six, every single operator has feedback rather than having the one piece of feedback per algorithm. So if we come over to operator one, we come into the mode here. Because we're in FM mode, we have access to a feedback control. So let's just bring that up a little bit. We don't want it to get clangy or anything. We just want to give it a little bit more attitude. Just drop up three down for a second. You can hear. Just a little bit of extra harmonics, a little bit more attitude in there. which I do like, and we'll do the same on operator three. Oops, always forget to change operators. Maybe a little bit much there, and hit them together. A little bit brassier. I wonder also if we can detune them a little bit more. Six and a half instead. Yeah, that's getting somewhere. So the other thing that's in this mode control here is that we have this width. Um, control and perhaps I'll just show show you on the spare operator that I haven't done anything to yet. So if we come across to operator five, so we've got the width control here. So just on a sine wave, you can hear that we're getting almost like a pulse width modulation vibe to it. And what it's doing is, uh, if we look at the analyzer, it's kind of adding a DC section into the oscillator shape, essentially changing its pulse width, but for all of the different shapes. I think that might be a really interesting thing to try with our voices here as well. So let's come back to operator one. I've turned down operator three. could definitely see that being cool. Let's try it on the higher one. Okay, I like it more on that one. So I think we should have that modulating as well. I think that would be a good thing to do. So um, there's no way to send an LFO to it directly within this interface, so we're going to have to head into our V patch here. So we'll choose a source for that. Um, Let's go with um, LFO2. Should we do LFO2 or LFO1? Let's go with LFO1. We can always change it. Let's go with LFO1. And destination, we're going to go to OP3. And we're going to go across here and FM width. It's too fast, but it's also going across that central point where it sort of turns off as well. So what we'll do is we'll come back into mode here and we'll just increase my, the width there. And then let's slow it down. So we'll come into the mod menu, down to LFO 1, which I use.
I'm going to set the key sync to um, per voice, I think, so that if I play things... in sequence, those modulations will all be out of sync and kind of blend together in interesting ways. It's maybe a little bit too deep at the moment. So we should get onto Operator 5 here and add some something special to our patch here. But I think we've gone far enough now uh, that we deserve a little treat, and that is some reverb. So we'll go into the effect menu and we'll go down to FX3. So our effects are all um, applied in series. So the last effect in the chain really uh, uh, is the last effect in the chain that it also affects all the stuff that's come through as well. I really like the smooth hall algorithm on this. So let's turn up the level and have a listen. Maybe a little bit longer. Does make all the difference, isn't it? Um, okay. Operator five, what are we going to do? So I think it might be interesting to make sure we're on operator five uh, to do kind of one of those fifth up kind of sounds with, with operator five. So we get that um, constant sort of um, uh, additional complexity to the chords we play. So let's also, but maybe not, I like that operating almost as a sub there and bringing some warmth in. So perhaps I won't do the fifth up thing, but let's try it and see what it sounds like. That's also nice. And the great thing about uh, an FM synth like this is that each of these operators has their own amp envelope. So now I've got this um, instant onset sound that's at the front of my sound. That completely changes the character. Okay, I'm going to go with with the um, the fifth up. I think that's um, I'm enjoying that. So let's think about the um, envelope. I like the fact that we now have this instant on to the sound. That's really that's really changed the vibe of the sound. I think uh, it needs a longer release. I think. And maybe a pluckier uh, attack, so if we reduced our decay time and maybe just lower the sustain a little bit. Bit of a longer release there. Um, let's make it really plucky, go exponential with our nice. Um, I think this should definitely be quite responsive to the velocity as well. So let's turn that velocity sensitivity over. sensitive. 
Nice. Now what we're going to do with that modulator, now this is giving me um, e-piano vibes now, which wasn't where I was originally going to go with this patch, but I do like the idea. So maybe what we'll do with, um, and we'll just bring these down for a second. Uh, we'll change it over to the 12-bit uh, because we've been lo-fi. Just a sine wave with some reverb and a nice... That's all you need sometimes. Lovely. Um, okay, so... So first things first, let's just come into the pitch menu for uh, Operator 5 when I'm thinking about it. And on to... Uh, yeah, page two. I want to just give a little bit of pitch modulation, I think. It's quite wide. But with that reverb, it kind of gives it that dreamy kind of feel. Which I like. Okay, so bringing up the... The other operator, the uh, the modulator for this operator. I wonder if we go with a fixed pitch so that we just get a bell-like resonance to the sound. That might be very nice. So um, make sure we're on operator six and uh, on page one of operator pitch, let's switch over to fixed instead. And obviously we're not going to push this much through it. Maybe somewhere around there. And it's going to give us this bell-like resonance to the sound. Um, so let's think about um, what we're going to do with our um, envelope and velocity for this. So first things first, we need to lengthen that release. We want to make it a little bit more plucky. So we'll re reduce our decay and lower our sustain. probably also have that be affected by velocity a bit. With everything else. getting a little bit I think maybe we need to have this bell sound come down to um, pretty much zero on uh, its envelope so back on operator 5 we'll drop that sustain really low because we don't want this hanging out too long I don't think Yeah, I'm feeling that as a vibe. 
Right, let's think about uh, again the filter involved here. So if we come over to the filter page, um, here we get to choose between a, a number of different filter types, um, it, both in terms of um, what type of filter they are, as in low pass, high pass, band pass, and band reject. But also there are some modeled versions here, um, both of the MS20 and the Poly6, and I really like the Poly6 on this kind of patch. So let's just have a feel um, for um, how that's going to affect the patch. Darkens up nicely. A little bit of resonance. I love how that smooth, hazy darkness that this particular filter model. on. Um, so I'm going to um, come to the second page here first of all. Um, it's on the second page. Ah, no, ignore me. Um, stick on the first page. Uh, let's put a little bit of envelope on that. Let's mess with that envelope shape a little bit. So on the mod page here, EG2. Does it sound like a bit of a tag? So I think instant on, slower decay, don't go all the way down, longer release and keep things linear so it's nice and smooth. What is that? Okay, so come back onto the filter here. Uh, I want this to be affected by velocity as well. And the way that we can do this is where we have our EG2 here. Um, at the bottom it has a control, so this is where the envelope generator modulation is going to go via another modulation. So if we go across here and find uh, velocity here, um, that means that when I play lighter, that envelope is going to open up less. Which I like. And perhaps also if we come into the second page here, we might want to give ourselves a little bit of LFO on here as well. But we probably don't want this LFO to be going Straight away, we probably want it to fade in a little bit, which is something that's very easy on this synth. If we go into our mod page here, and we go down to LFO2, which is the one that's connected to the filter by default, and we can just give it um, a bit of a fade here, maybe like half a second or something. More than that. Try that in a lower octave. I now think that pitch wobble is slightly too much on operator five. Uh, so let's just adjust that. Uh, operator five pitch, LFO, just pull it back a little bit. It's more obtrusive at lower registers. That 
filter modulation is probably a little bit too obvious at the moment. So how about, here's an idea, um, let's make it more obvious. <laughs> Which sounds ridiculous, obviously. But then here on this control here, let's send that via the mod wheel. So it's something we can bring in. And how about this as an extra bit of fun here? If we come into the V patch here, and go to a blank page here. Let's also send the mod wheel to the speed of LFO2 as well, so it gets faster when we open up as well. That's cool. Right. This needs some stereo movement for definite now. So let's do that. And we can stick in the V patch here um, to do this. So if we come across to a blank slot here, uh, I'm going to use um, LFO 3, which is the assignal LFO. They're all assignal via the V patch, actually. But. Um, there we go. And then if we go into program and into pan. make that again too obvious but then again uh, actually no that's, that's just how it happening nicely but one thing I do want to check however if I come into the mod page here for LFO 3 let's change the key sync to per voice so each time I play uh, a note the LFO starts again which should have things sort of weaving around in a different kind of feel where it doesn't feel so much like the whole sound is going left to right, rather individual notes are, which I think is a cooler sound. It may even allow us to go a little bit more obvious. That's feeling pretty cool now. Um, adding that pitch, uh, sorry, the filter modulation on the mod wheel there has made me wonder also whether um, if we come back to our two main operators here, uh, if we come into level and onto page three here, we can also send LFO one to the level of, well, let's send it to the modulators instead, so it's changing the timbre. Just listen to that, just that one. Yeah, I quite like that. So let's, um, also have that coming from the mod wheel. And we'll do the same with operator three as well. 
but maybe go in the other direction. So we can get properly swampy. With our mod wheel turned up. Yes, that's feeling nice. So I think we're definitely in kind of like the um, final tweak stage of the patch. So often what I would be doing at this stage is listening to um, whether there's too much or too little um, modulation uh, FM-ing happening at very high. Okay, so there's some, there is some uh, aliasing happening there, presumably on operators one and three primarily um so that basically means that there's too much modulation happening uh, when you get very high up on the keyboard it's kind of okay there um so what we can do to fix this if we come into our two um, um modulators so two and four so we'll start with two if we go on to page two of the level page here um, what this allows us to do is taper the overall level of the uh, operator as we move across the keyboard and this works for our carriers as well as our modulators so you can have uh, different carriers come in and out across the keyboard there's lots of really cool stuff you can do here but i'm just going to use this just to tame this aliasing up at the top here so i'm going to set my center quite high because i don't think it's um, particularly uh, oppressive elsewhere. Maybe we'll try G6 and I'll just turn this down a little bit until we're hearing less of it. Bear in mind there's still some coming from the other operator as well. I think that's taming that nicely and then we'll just duplicate that so G6 um, as our center frequency on operator four now. And we'll just turn that down a little bit until it kind of disappears. So that's going to just smooth things out a little bit at the top end there. At the bottom end, um, often you can find that you're um, getting similar sort of weirdness or that you're actually under modulating and it's sounding dull. I don't particularly feel there's a problem at the bottom end. I think that's fine. So uh, let's not uh, mess with the level scaling there so much. So what that leaves me with is the prospect of going into my effects. I've got two spare slots here. So the first thing I thought I might do is there is a... Where is it? Decimator. There we go. Decimator effect here, which is um, a bit crushing and sample rate reduction. And I thought this might be an interesting way to get additional sort of lo-fi grit into our sound. So uh, the controls we've got are um, a bit reduction here, which as you hear, as we go down, it's going to start to introduce Oh, we're at the end, end of a Nine Inch Nails track now. Uh, so we don't need to go that low. But maybe take the whole mix down to 12 bits. So turning that off. Sorry, yes, the damping was also turned all the way up. So the damping is also going to be taken away top end from the sound to reduce the, the glitter. So this is just 12 bit and nothing else. And off. Let's just take it down to the 
cusp of where we start hearing some noise. Uh, and then our frequency reduction, we can immediately hear that sort of digital glitter. Now I'm going to filter this out using the high damping. But I was thinking maybe we go down to like half CD quality or something. Then just dial back on that glitter with the high damping. So you can just hear the edge of it. And then mix it in with our original sound, so not don't go full in on that. So without it, it's a lot clearer. There's just some interesting grit going on there. We could push it harder if we wanted. Perhaps we should. Quarter CD quality. It's subtle, but I like what it's doing. Here, maybe push it a little bit harder, as soon as we're mixing it in. I know, it might not be for everyone. It might be one of those effects that you turn on and off on a patch, but I quite like what that's doing to the overall sound. The other thing that I feel this needs is chorus. Come on, let's not let's not shy away from it. Let's add some chorus. It's going nice and deep and a little bit slower. Maybe go less of it mixed in, but deeper. pretty cool. Add some extra reverb for for vibe. That's nice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that chill little exploration of building a pad from scratch on the opposite. So we ended up in a slightly different place than I was expecting, with that sort of plinky electric piano thing happening alongside the pad sound. Uh, but it's a nice place to end up, I think.
If you did enjoy the video, then uh, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you're interested in the Op6, because there's going to be a bunch more Op6 content coming out uh, very shortly. Um, let me know in the comments below what kind of patch you'd like to see me tackle next. Um, I kind of felt like it was probably base time, but I am more than happy to consider alternatives. Other than that, um, as always, thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.